No, because we broke the laws of God. Nowadays, there's a religion called Christianity, and that's what our people were given in slavery. You follow? Remember, that's what. Go back to Deuteronomy 28:64. Go back to Deuteronomy 28, 64. So, so far, everybody understand about what, what uh, 1 Timothy 4 is talking about. Nothing to be refused, for it is all good if it received with thanksgiving, right? That's not talking about you can now, you can eat a pterodactyl. You can now eat a lizard. You can eat a, a, a snail. God don't say that. God say, don't eat that stuff. You can eat pork. You can eat the chitlins. God say, don't do that. You understand? We, we went to Sirach to explain Everything that God created was good for its use, for its right. purpose. So the purpose or context of 1 Timothy that Christians do not understand was dietary or what you can eat. Yeah. Context was not what use it has in the world, but what use it has on the dinner plate. And it has no use. Swine, pork, catfish, shrimps, lobster, all that don't have no place on the plate. All right? Come on. Come on. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So when the Bible say even, it's saying we're expressing this is what I'm talking about. And then it says wood and stone. What are the two religions that our people flock to? Christianity and Islam. Brother is on it. Christianity and Islam. What happens in Christianity? You worship a cross that Christ was murdered on. You worship it. That's what you do in Christianity. Right. You put it around your neck and you think that you you think that you're gonna be safe from all evil with it on. Yeah, that's idolatry according to the Bible. But the 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 the, the stone or rock at Mecca. They walk around it and they kiss it. If they lucky or blessed enough to make it to it, they kiss that stone thinking that it's God. Thinking that it represents their 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 uh, uh, spirit, their faith, their uh, um, uh, uh, the, the heavenly father. That's what they think when they kiss that thing. You understand what I'm talking about? Look it up if y'all don't know. It's the I, I know. They do it because, the prophet, because they're prophets. Right. And where they think that thing came from? From the most high. That's where they think it came from. That's why the Bible, thousands of years before it happened, if, uh, Islam is only what, um, 800 years old? How old is Islam? It was six, 13, 1300 BC, I mean AD. 622 AD. 622 AD. 622 AD was the start of Islam. It's a new religion, a new religion. When did Moses write this? Thousands of years before Islam came on the earth. And he had the black man's number. He said, y'all going to be worshipped because y'all don't want to listen to the Most High God. Read verse 15. When, because y'all don't want to listen to the Most High God, y'all going to be lost in slavery serving other people's God. Y'all going to be praying to a white Jesus and y'all going to be walking around a stone kissing it. Come on. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Curse shall that be in the city. So the, the, the Bible lists a, a plethora of curses that would only befall our people. Only befall our people. I read to the sister one. Y'all went, I don't think y'all was here yet. But one we read, well, I'm rushing obviously. One we read was Deuteronomy 28:32. That said that your children will be given to your sons and your daughters will be given unto another people, and you will have no might in your hand to redeem them. No might in your hand. We said that we went to uh, verse 45, stating that the things that your people will suffer that's written in the Bible is how you would know that you are the children of Israel. That's how you would know the horrible things that happen to you. Right. And only you. Watch this. Jump down to verse, and we read to verse 64, stating that we would go, that we would go into slavery all over the world, and wherever we get off them boats, whatever religion was there is the religion that we will be murdered if we don't keep. Right. Murdered if we don't keep. Watch this. Now let's jump down. Let's get 68. Come on. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Again with ships. So now the Bible says the Lord will bring you into Egypt again with ships. 
into Egypt. The word Egypt is a word synonymous with bondage, slavery. Slavery, that's what Egypt means. It don't mean Northeast Africa. That's not what it means. That's what we call it nowadays. It wasn't called that back then. So the Lord says he will bring you into Egypt again. Didn't we just come out of Egypt under Moses here? We just came. So he said, I'm going to send you back into Egypt, Egypt, back into bondage, back into the servitude that you just came out of. I'm going to send you back. But this time you're going to go how? Into Egypt again with ships. With ships this time. With ships. With ships. And I'm not talking about Carnival Cruise Line. Not Norwegian neither. Not Royal Caribbean. Oh no, these were cargo slave ships. These were ships made for transporting merchandise. Right. Merchandise. Not made for the comfort of souls or man. Yes, come on, sis. Let me let me finish this real fast. I'm gonna finish the scriptures a little bit more and then ask you a question. Don't forget your thought. Come on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. The place where I'm saying this to you at, right? Because we were over there near Israel when Moses taught us this, right? Come on. Thou shalt see it no more again. Moses said, I ain't talking about where we at. Don't think y'all going into Egypt we just walked out of. Y'all going into one that's going to require ships this time. Y'all going into one that's going to require you going on boats. You're going over the waters. Come on. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. When y'all get off those boats. You're going to be sold to Master Charles, Master Johnson, Master Jones, Master Phelps, Master Jenkins. You're going to be sold. You're going to be sold to your enemies. You know what Christianity teaches? Black people sold black people. That's not what the Bible said. Africans sold Israelites. We're not African. We're Israelites. Right. You're not African. You're not Egyptian. You're not. I know that might be a bombshell, sister. You're not African. You're not. A, you're an Israelite. Africans sold us to the white man, to the Arabs, and to the Chinese. That's right. Back then, let's call, they're called Ishmael. Back then, they were called uh, 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 Edom, which is the so-called white man, or Esau. So when you open the Bible, you can understand. Back then, the, the uh, children of Moab were the Chinese, or are the Chinese. That's their real name. Now you can see clearly. Now you, when you open this Bible, you know what people did what to you. Now you know what wars the children of Israel had with these other nations that hate your guts now. Hate you. Now you know, when you open this Bible, what names to look for and how to understand what you're seeing. Right. All right, come on. Oh, no, no, no. Was that on that? Oh, come on. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and slave men and bond women and slave women come on and no man shall buy you so it says no man shall buy you that terminology buy you is going into is going into in our law in the law of, of, of God when one of us go uh, let's say we get we, we come down on hard times right we fall on hard times well what I would have to do if I see you on hard times I'll have to say brother come work for me I got you now you work for me you understand what I'm saying? What does that mean? We didn't have to work back then. That's what that means. You would have had to done some evil like stole out of your brother's house and he caught you. So now you have to pay double, which made you broke. So now you can't take care of your family. So I got to say, of course, another, but I'm, I'm not the same person you stole from. I'm, a, I'm one of your other, bro hey, come work for me, bro. I got you. You can come work for me. You understand? And that's how we redeem because you can repent from stealing. You can change and not do that no more. So that's one, back then, that's one curse that you didn't have to die from. That's one sin that you didn't have to die for. You understand? So when it says, no man shall buy you, that's, Moses had to explain that so we don't think, well, if I'm sold into slavery, y'all just come save me. Y'all just come get me out of slavery. Right. No, Moses wasn't talking about that. He talking about to another man, to another person. And it's slavery that we never understood or we were so spoiled from understanding back then what's the slavery that we now serve on cotton fields and cotton plantations. We couldn't understand that back then. We had chariots, they called UFOs, those were over our heads. We had a pillar of fire coming from that chariot down to the ground every single night leading us through the, through the wilderness. Any, any nation, any people that speak ill towards us, God kills them. That was our reality back then. So when, when you hear these things, somebody gonna have me as a slave? 
What do you mean? That was strange. That confused us. You understand what I'm saying? So when it says no man shall buy you, it was talking about as far as the law that we have. If my brother's on hard time, my sister's on hard time, I have to redeem them. I have to, what, what's your bill? You owe him? Okay, well you come work for my wife. You'll be her, you'll be her uh, servant or her maid, right? Or her, uh, what they, like butler or something like that. Whatever she need, you know what I mean? In righteousness, not no, not, not slavery, not slave. The scriptures say we shall not make our brother as a slave, right? So that would just be, she would give you a job. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.